A farmer understands the needs of every season, and so do Farm Bureau members. When Arkansas families needed electricity, our members brought it. Reliable roads, our members built them. The agricultural education, our members provided. Today's members may not live on a farm, but their connections are as close as ever. So when that difficult season comes, no member has to face it alone. For every season, Arkansas Farm Bureau. Join today. As we've been discussing, most of the heated primaries this spring are in the Republican primaries. Republicans have fielded multiple candidates in five constitutional offices and two congressional seats. Let's look at our latest round of Talk Business Hendricks College polling that surveyed likely Republican voters. Here's the results. In the Attorney General's race, we have Leslie Rutledge at 9%, Patricia Nation at 10%, David Sterling 21%, a whopping 60% undecided in that race. Uh, moving on to the U.S. Congress District 2 position, we've got French Hill, 59%. This race could possibly not go into a runoff. Colonel Conrad Reynolds at 14% and Clemmer, 7%, just 20% undecided in the 2nd Congressional District. In the 4th Congressional District primary, Tommy Maul, 10%, Bruce Westerman, 47%, and undecided is 43%. Now, on Monday, we're going to release results of the GOP governor's primary, and on Tuesday, we're going to release Republican primary results in the lieutenant governor, treasurer, and auditor races. Now, joining me to talk politics is this week's roundtable. We have KATV's Capitol reporter, Janelle Lilly, Robert Kuhn, GOP strategist with Impact Management Group, and Skip Rutherford, dean of the Clinton School of Public Service. Thank you all for being here. Before we talk about those poll numbers, I think there's something else that's been more major that happened on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday, we got the announcement that the president, President Barack Obama, is coming here to Arkansas to tour the damage on Wednesday with the governor. And I just want to ask the first question as far as how this plays politically. Of course, there's not a primary in the race where uh, Senator Pryor is, but does it make any kind of difference? Uh, well, I'll start. I, I, I think it shouldn't. I hope it doesn't. Uh, you know, we live in a, a very partisan environment, it's hyper political. Uh, I think there are certainly some times when uh, politics have to be put aside. I think the tragedy and damage, you know, uh, that we've seen with the tornadoes is one of those times. And, and, and I would hope that, you know, the temptation to be snarky and uh, jump into the, the partisanship would, would be resisted by folks. I agree with that. We've seen disasters in the past. We've seen Oklahoma, Arizona presidents uh, come to support the victims, to support the families, to support the state. This rises above partisanship, and I agree with Robert. It doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat. When it comes to helping people who are struggling and who are hurting, it's the right thing to do. You have two people who are not running for election, you know, President Obama and then also Governor Mike Phoebe. Mm -hmm. So both of those guys are the main headliners there. And my question, too, though, is for Senator Pryor, who extended this invitation to President Obama to come here, does it blunt the stigma for him of the attachment to President Obama that is clearly a very big uh, political factor in this year's races? If you're going to be seen with President Obama in a time of need, does that not help politically? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think, again, um, if you look at it from a political perspective, I think he, I think he, he his, his request for President Obama coming is genuine. I mean, Arkansas needs help. Faulkner County was devastated, and so were many other little towns along the way. So I think you've got to look at this purely as I'm standing up for my state, I'm advocating for people. I think anybody in a responsible position would do that, Democrat or Republican. I would agree with that. You know, I think uh, having the president, regardless of who, what party he's in and who he is and whether or not he's well liked, I think having the president here in this type of situation is one that's a good thing and I, I would hope that it doesn't turn into a political issue. Well, I'll take the position of that I do think it will turn into something of a political issue and I do think that it will help Mark Pryor to be seen with the president in a time of need. I, I see that as being something that is very possible in terms of voter uh, appreciation for that necessarily, particularly well, think, in a particularly think, in a part of the state where Faulkner County leans very Republican. Well, it might, but I mean, you know, again, you're going to have people, uh, unlike Robert and me, who are so partisan on either side that that you're going to have people shooting at them. And I think it's it's a fair point to say that they're going to be critics. But I also think it's a fair point to point out that look, it puts Tom Cotton in a little awkward spot. I mean, he voted against aid for Super Sandy. So the question is, is, is he going to support aid for Faulkner County? 
Well, I can't see him not. I can't him. imagine I can't any circumstance that no, he no. wouldn't do that. Well, you know, that's a, that could be a flip flop position. Let's turn our attention to the second congressional district. Yeah, these numbers were, I was very surprised when we got those. And 59% for French Hill, 14% for Colonel Conrad Reynolds, and then 7% for Ann Clummer, which also surprised me considering how many voters you have in Saline County. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, um, look, if, the, if these numbers are anywhere close, uh, barring a major upset, French Hill is in a prime position to win this thing without a runoff. Now, what we don't know is grassroots efforts, what we don't know is county by county turnout, but clearly this shows a very strong force for, for French Hill. My dad's been driving I think old blues since before I was born. If you were in the Hill campaign, you got to be very thrilled with these numbers because you got 59% with 20% still undecided. You're going to pick up some of that undecided vote. Washington He's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, that 20% undecided is a very low considering the other undecided. It is, and, and you know, with French being where he is at 59%, you know, you've, you've started to see some of the other campaigns, they, and they have been for the past few weeks, going negative against him. I think it fits within the idea that they kind of knew where he was. They've been trying to bring him back below 50. Uh, I think there's a pretty high likelihood that that doesn't happen. Um, clearly, he has pretty strong support amongst Republican primary voters, um, and in my opinion, you know, would have broad support even across the aisle in a general election, probably the, you know, the most formidable candidate to run against Pat Hayes. And full disclosure, your firm, not you personally, but your Correct. firm does some work for French Hill. Uh, does the, full, does, disclosure, does, full disclosure, my son had Ann Clemmer in class. <laughs> <laughs> does the fat cat French Hill ad that Ann Clemmer rolled out this week, how does that impact the race? Do you see it making a dent? I don't think there was a lot of money behind that media buy, but uh, it did create quite a bit of buzz. You know, I think when you start, you know, in, down the, the contrast or the negative ads, I think there's certain things you should point out about other people. I think it's probably Probably a little off message to criticize someone for being a successful business person that's hired people across the state and built a business and created jobs and making them a fat cat you know I, I don't think that's a down a, a downside I think people should be applauded for that and people with business experience are you know bring a lot to the table so I, I think it's kind of a, a boomerang if you will well, I think you know in, in, the, in the Senate race in 2010 Republican primary 142,000 people voted so the, the, the key thing is how many people will vote in this primary and will any Democrats cross over? Does Ann Clemmer have a chance to pick up people that say French Hill is the strongest person against Pat Hayes and we're going to go over and send him a message? That was done in 1990. Yeah. I want to uh, ask you about Well, we got to take a quick commercial break here, so why don't we take the rest of our uh, conversation to online to talkbusiness.net and katv.com. Everybody will stick around. Yeah, Congressional right. Four. We'll do it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We still have the 4th Congressional District to talk about. We also still have the Attorney General's race to talk about. But when we come back, in our live program, the death penalty has certainly been in the state and nation spotlight. We're going to take a look at Arkansas's history on the subject from the Prior Center archives after this break. As Arkansas's population grows, so do our energy demands. But with the right mix of resources, reliable, affordable power will always be a reality. These resources are all around us in our rivers, blowing through our trees, even right below our feet. The answer isn't focusing on one resource, it's embracing them all. The electric cooperatives of Arkansas know that a balanced approach to power builds our communities and powers our dreams. Visit themixmatters.com and see why there's power in knowledge. And welcome back to our Web Extra. Janelle Lilly from KATV, her, our lead capital reporter there. Skip Rutherford, Dean of the Clinton School of Public Service. Robert Kuhn with Impact Management. We were talking about the congressional races, some of our new Talk Business Hendricks College polling. Uh, we were still talking about the second district when uh, when we had to go off air. Yeah, but I actually wanted to move you to the fourth district. You, we talked about the 20% undecided in the second district, but you did some strong polling in Garland County in the fourth district and still getting 43% undecided. How does that play into the race? Yeah, well, I mean, again, our poll construction was we surveyed Republican voters who uh, they had to have a history originally from a voting in previous Republican primaries. Then we asked them, did they plan to participate in this uh, upcoming May 20th Republican primary. So I feel like it's a very strong likely voter 
uh, in a Republican primary for those numbers there. Uh, the undecideds don't really surprise me. The fourth district's so vast. I mean, it's so big anyway. And we did get about a quarter of the votes out of Garland County, which I, you tell me, I mean, I think that's a pretty accurate representation of the yeah, fourth. Yeah, I mean, the fourth district obviously has changed in recent years. I think still Garland County is a, is a pretty substantial base there. And I would imagine it's going to turn out a, 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 a significant amount of voters. And obviously that's, you know, Bruce Westerman's home and right. and uh, I know Tommy has some roots there as well but um, but Bruce has been but there Bruce for a lot been there longer a and been elected and to office there that's as right. well too that's so, right yeah uh, what do you think about uh, it looks like Maul's money hadn't really broken through he did spend some money and went up with a nice looking TV ad but doesn't seem to have had much impact well you know I know very little about Republican primaries, as you know, so I, I yield to my good friend Robert. You voted in one before, I did haven't not. you? In 1990? I, I threatened to, but I didn't. <laughs> Only because we people... Can, we can check the voter file. No, you go that. back and check it because the press did. Uh, but I didn't because they were all watching which primary I voted, but I had a lot of friends that did. But but I, I don't know how that the primary plays. Again, it, it just seems to me, and again, I may be totally wrong on this, it's, it's about name recognition right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not sure whether any of these other races are cutting through um, all the clutter. I don't know whether they are. I, I, I can't get a sense of it. I mean, Tommy Mall's ad was more of an introduction ad. I haven't, I haven't seen anything else from him. It was just a, you know, here I am, let me introduce myself. And But we're running out of time, really. We are running out of time. You know, I know obviously both candidates are working hard. You can see that they're doing a lot sure. of local events. You know, the mm -hmm. question is, you know, how widely attended are those events? They're not really, you know, reaching the masses, if you will. I think obviously, you know, Bruce Westerman, uh, started with a little bit broader name ID, you know, Tommy coming from a uh, largely unknown position in the political world and, uh, you know, that, coming back from a 33 point spread is, is going to be tough, especially as you're coming into early voting. So, I, I mean, that's a pretty big challenge. show up even though we see the TV ads or seem to be the most uh, abundant here, but in a Republican primary, you can direct mail yeah. A uh, highly targeted Republican sure. voter, and that stuff does not necessarily show up on the radar. And I bet you good there's point. been more of that going I on. Bet you're right. It's good if point. they want to win, they better be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the AG's race too. We'd like to get y'all's take on that again. In this Republican primary, we see David Sterling with about 21 percent, uh, Patricia Nation and uh, Leslie Rutledge at 10 and 9. Huge undecided here. This stuff's going to have to break in the next. Yeah two weeks. I mean, what, what's going to happen? I was happen? surprised at how many undecided yeah. there were. And, you know, maybe that will change now that uh, Leslie just released that ad this past week. So I and don't, I I don't know. I think Sterling's going up with an ad as well, he, too. I saw his ad as well. Yeah. I haven't seen anything from uh, Nation yet, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, those numbers are certainly in flux, but 60% undecided. So how does a voter make their mind up now that they're going to the poll on a race that I think the Attorney General's office is a pretty important one. You sure. need to have some knowledge of what's going on there. Uh, go ahead. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 th I, I, I think if you look at these numbers and you see, you know, again, if you were each of the campaign, what you'd be saying is, let's get on television. Let's get on television. Let's get our name out there. Let's do this. But Robert makes a point about, you know, a targeted number of Republican voters. So, you know, maybe a strong direct mail campaign, a strong uh, internet campaign. I don't know. I don't think the Republican voters even know their candidates for attorney general. I think they know Bruce Westerman. They know Tim Griffin. They know Asa Hutchinson. I mean, I, but I don't think they know mm -hmm. David Sterling or Leslie Rutler. I would agree with that. I mean, I think you've got candidates in this race that obviously have legal careers or have worked in party, uh, but they haven't served the public. So they, they really are coming from an area of, of really low name ID, um, you know, as to how people make up their mind. Um, there's a lot of different ways people make up their mind. It might be ballot position in some places. They might skip it all together and just not pick. Uh, I think it's probably pretty likely this one goes to a runoff if, you know, you don't see any major movement soon. Um, you know, I would think just based on infrastructure and what I, you know, what I've seen some of the candidates doing, you probably are going to have Sterling and, and Leslie Rutledge in maybe a runoff and then uh, see how it goes from there. You know, barring any kind of last minute major endorsements that help an undecided voter who doesn't know any of the candidates that will finally say, you know, well, if he likes her or he likes him, then I'll go with that. You know, that could be a last minute factor. I agree with that. Leslie uh, is from my hometown of Batesville. So our families have been friends for years. And you're still not voting in the Republican I'm primary. Not, but, but, but she is a very bright, talented woman. I mean, yeah, I may disagree with her politically, but I am certainly not criticizing her, her, her ability to 
to, to, to be smart and her ability to make decisions. So I wouldn't underestimate her. I, uh, I wouldn't underestimate her, though I do think that Sterling's ads about, uh, you know, his conservative positions and all that are getting out there that a little the bit. the PAC money paid for, the, well, the senior ground. Well, I think ground. that's right. And I think also, again, he, 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 I just think, mm -hmm. I think being from central Arkansas where he is known in the legal community and, and uh, so, but, but what's a, what's a number of undecided? 60? 60. 60. Still a 60. It's pretty big. You ought to get in the race, Robbie. <laughs> it's too late now. I'd have you to go do. right in. You go, go right in. Yeah. Robert and I could help you. I don't think I could do that. So, <laughs> change my name to Elvis Presley, I might well, have yeah. a little bit bigger. You know, I think that Conrad. law degree, too. CCR. Right. Yeah, do, well, CCR. Do you have to have a law degree to run for attorney general, or do you just have to be learned in the law? I think you just have to be learned Ooh. in the law. You probably so we, have to we, have we, paid your dues, though. Well, you definitely <laughs> have to have your legal license. Why would you have to do that? All right, enough. We're out of time. Thank you all so much Thanks. for being with us. Thanks. Skip Rutherford, Robert Kuhn, Janelle Lilly. Uh, that is all for our Web Extra. I'm Roby Brock. Stay up with the latest business and political headlines at talkbusiness.net.